Thank you, Jesus. We honor you this morning. Wonderful Jesus. There's nothing that we can do apart from you. Thank you, Jesus. Let us just pray. May God open the eyes of our understanding. May God enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we can understand you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for opening up our eyes to see you, to understand you, so that we can walk into your fullness. Thank you, Jesus. We take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every wandering thought, every thought be held captive right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for fruitful hearts this morning. Good soil, good hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you all agree that in the days that we are living in, there are many things happening in our lives, challenges in our lives throughout this earth that we are here? We can never have so-called days without challenges. So they can actually rob us of our affection and our attention towards God if we give in to these challenges. Especially in the days that we are living in, there are so many gadgets. The advancement of technology all around us can actually capture all our attention, all our focus. Even though they can give us so much information, but this information can many times distract us, takes our attention off God. Just too much information available. Just can rob our attention. So this morning, let us just give this time to God. Give this attention, this time, this focus to God during this short time. So is everyone ready for the message? Because Jesus is the message. Jesus is the message today. The songs that we sing. Jesus is the message. So just have all your hearts open. May God really enlighten our eyes to understand Him. Because when we understand Him, we can walk in the life that God called us to walk in. You see, recently we just had this gospel camp. Remember? The gospel camp. And some of us have actually gone to this gospel camp. And during the gospel camp, there was this verse being spoken. So I'm sure some of you would have known what this verse is. This verse has never really spoken to me that much, even though I've heard it many, many, many times. Many, many, many times. And, and because so many preachers normally would, would speak about it, so sometimes it can be so familiar to us that, we, that it actually becomes something that does not really impact us that much anymore. 
it's become so familiar. So familiarity is a dangerous place. When you become too familiar with the things that you do, the things that you hear, the things that you listen to, sometimes it, it has actually become a routine. You just do simply doing it without giving any thought to it. It doesn't impact you like it used to. When the first time when you heard it, because you have done it too many rounds. So this verse that actually caught my attention or impacted me during the camp was this. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I'm sure every one of us as Christians will know this. Very familiar, right? I do not know about you. Myself, I've come across this. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. But how many actually took time to ponder, to, to maybe take a moment to reflect upon what is being said in this verse. Is it really true? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Is it really true? The gospel is the good news. Is the news really good? You see, the days we are living in, there are many challenges throughout. So this understanding will help us in our life that we're living in, especially the times that we're living in. This verse carries weight. What then is the gospel? Is it really good? Just like Holy Communion. Sometimes we can do Holy Communion without really understanding the truth behind the Holy Communion that we're taking. We can do it too frequently that we lose focus on what's really behind it. So we need to revisit the gospel again. To keep our eyes on the gospel, to give our ears our attention to the gospel again. Because the gospel is really good news. Good news. It is really good. We need to give our attention to it and have a deeper understanding so that we can live and operate in this life. We can walk and operate in this life. You see, when the Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, salvation in the Greek is translated as soteria. The word communicates to us the thought of deliverance, safety, preservation, soundness, restoration, and healing. There are so many things that is consist in this word salvation. It's a complete package. Basically, it's just a complete package of what God has done for us. It gives us safety. It gives us deliverance. It restores us. It heals us. All this needs to be understood by our hearts, not so much by our intellect. Not so much by our logical minds. Though, logical minds, they are good, which we need 
also. But spiritual things are understood spiritually. It needs your heart. It needs your heart. It is more caught than taught. It needs your heart. And the power of God, power in the Greek is translated as dunamis. The dynamite in English. You know, the bomb, the dynamite. Imagine dynamite. How great is that impact once you let go of the dynamite? That's how powerful the power of God is. It's the power of God that delivers us from darkness, from a life of darkness. We have yet to know God. We were living totally isolated from God without the presence of God. You were all once there. It is so very important to know this even though they are so basic. Because these are foundational truth. It's foundational. It's a, just like a building when you need to build a building you need to have proper foundation, structure, before you can build it upwards so that the whole weight of the building can sustain on that foundation. So basically, the gospel is the foundation of our belief for believers here. The gospel is the foundation most basic of all for us to know so that we can walk in this life which God has destined for us. The gospel is God's gift of life. It's the gift of life. The greatest gift that God gave to mankind is the greatest gift ever for mankind he has given himself for all of us he shed his blood for all of us seated here those who are hearing me know that god has actually purchased you purchased your life to give you his life we were meant for eternal damnation totally separated from the love, from the presence of God. Just imagine yourself at one moment without God and you're going through challenges. What would it be like? Please let me know. I don't want to live life without having God by my side, especially when I'm going through challenges. I want someone to be with me, someone that I can relate to. Just imagine, at any moment, you do not know who to relate to. You feel so isolated. You see, Jesus came to give us this life, to reconcile men to God the Father, so that you don't have to live a life without His love, without His presence, without Him being with you. He's not only by your side this morning. He's with you. He's in you. He's living in you. He's a living being. And you are now a being that is living because He's exchanged His life for your life. Your life was meant to be down the road of destruction forever living without the love and the presence of God. But because God has come to your life, then now you have the liberty, the freedom in Christ. Appreciate that freedom 
in Jesus. Appreciate the life of God because the life of God means everything. Just like the Bible says, apart from Him, you can do nothing. Which means it is meaningless. It is really meaningless because God gives purpose. You are original, originated from God. God is your creator. He's your maker. He makes you with a purpose. So apart from Him, you can find no purpose, you can find no rest, you can find no peace. Just imagine life without peace, without purpose, just going through the motion of life, just like everyone else. Normal life. But now, you are believers. You are believers. You are Christians. You have life that is so different. You're meant to live life, not only life, but the abundant life. Life upon life. If I can say. It takes God's power, dunamis power, to deliver all of us from that shame, from that guilt, from failures, from mistakes that we made. It takes the power, the life of God to change situations, to change human lives. This is that power, the power that raised us up, that raised Jesus even from death. The power that destroys sin, the curse of sin and death. It is the power of life. We were meant to be ruled by darkness. But because of Jesus' love for each one of us, that we can live the God kind of life. Through His death, through the blood shed on the cross, He delivered us. This is good news. So, it's, it's just more than getting safe so that we could go back to heaven after this life here on earth. But actually, you're already living that life. You already have that life in you. It's not only a license for you to get back to heaven. It's a license even for you to operate that life right now in where we are. So, it's very important that we know it's more than getting us to heaven, but more of getting heaven into us. If you're hearing what I say, eh? it's more than getting us to heaven, but it's more like heaven getting into us. We are made to host God Bible says we are the habitation of God, the place where God stays. So you are a host to God. The gospel has the power to forgive us of all our failures, our sins. Not only to forgive, but He has the power to cleanse us to deliver us from our shame situations. It has the power to change situations, change lives. It's the power that brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light. It positions us 
to be a son of God, an heir of God. It changes our state. It changes our position from an orphan, orphan, to a son of God, his beloved. So don't at one moment live life like an orphan without God. After what God has gone through. You see, Jesus did not do it halfway through. Or he did not only do it half-heartedly like some of us might do things. Probably not you, maybe me. Sometimes half-heartedly, sometimes just not going all the way, halfway through, we give up. I'm telling you, Jesus did not give up on all of us. He suffered, He shed His blood so that He can get His life into you. He can reconcile you back to a relationship with God. How much does it mean for you to have a relationship with God? Someone that who you can relate with when no one else is beside you. This is what God has given to each one of us when we open up our hearts to believe in Him. Wonderful Jesus. This gospel is a gospel of love. No one could love you enough to die for you. To go all the way to give up his life just for you. The gospel is a gospel of hope when everything else seems to fail. Nothing you can rely on. It's like sinking sand. Yet the gospel is a gospel of hope. It's a confident expectation of good. The Bible says it's a gospel of peace. When you feel you have no peace, He is the peace beyond understanding. That's why the verse says, surpasses understanding. He is your peace. Despite of what you go through, it has the power to redeem, to restore us back into the right order, right position. It delivers us. So when he said it is finished on the cross, took his last breath and said it is finished, which means it is completely done. It is done. It's a done deal for all of us. Believe it, it's, it's totally, completely done. God is not a theory, nor is it a fairy tale, but it's the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. What God has done has restored us back to the glory of God and the life of God. Now you can live the God kind of life. You receive now God as your inheritance. So when you have God, you actually have everything. Do you believe it? Do you really believe it? I sometimes speak to myself many times. Many times. Each time that I go through something, do I believe what I believe? Or has it been so stale? Being a Christian, after receiving Him, just waiting to go home. Is that all there is to it? How about our life here on earth that we are living in? 
every day of our life? Is it a life without any purpose anymore, just like the ones who have yet to believe? So is it really true? God, you are true. Is it really that good? Is it good news? Is it good life? That's why we need to revisit the gospel again. Rekindle the understanding of God. Rekindle the love of God. What God has given us. He has qualified all of us by His blood. Precious blood. Sinless blood. Only He can give. To make us one with Him. It's only the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The gospel is the gospel that empowers us. It restores us to the glory. The gospel still speaks today and is still very much active. Even though it has been spoken more than 2,000 years ago. What Jesus has done. It is eternal. It is endless. It is ageless. It is never out of date. It never expires. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still the one that holds all things together. He's the one that still sustains all things together. He's limitless. This gospel has no boundaries. It is for everyone that chose to believe that qualifies you. It is not only for us, for our families, but they are for everyone, for your friends, for everyone that will believe it is true. Romans 10, verse 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved. You shall be saved. You shall be in safety. You shall be delivered from your enemies. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is just no ordinary man. He's a God-man with the life. Life. We all really need this life. Life. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. See what Jesus has done. And He raised us up together with Him and made us sit down together, giving us a joint sitting with Him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. This is the Amplified. He raised us, not only raised us, but seated us with Him. Join sitting with Him. You are, he changes your position. You were not meant to sit there. But now because of what Jesus has done, you are now seated with Him. Imagine sitting with Him. Above all, dominion. Living in dominion. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. 
for His divine power has bestowed, given us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through a true and personal knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. You see, the power of God has given us everything necessary for this life. It's not one thing, two thing, three things. It's all things, everything necessary for this life. See, even add in amplified dynamic. Supposed to be dynamic. As you know God. That's why we, we all need to have a deeper understanding of God. It may just seem so simple, yet you take the time to just discover God all over again. It's just like first love. Just discover God all over again, giving your attention to Him. So we need to stir up this life. We need to stir up our life. There is a fire given to us. You see, there is this verse in John, in him was life, and the life was the light of man. You remember this verse? In him was life, and that life was the light of man. So I went to read up the Greek translation uh, word for word for this verse. So I found out that the Greek, the, the translation was light is actually fire. I, I, I didn't know light was fire until I read it. It, it was a fire in the old, old English translated. It was the fire God has given. In him was life, and that life was the fire of God given. It's so powerful once I read it. It's a fire in us. There's a fire given to us. We need to refire that up, rekindle all that God has given us or equipped us with. He came to not only give himself just for us to live life anyhow, but it, it empowers us. It gives us meaning to life. It has purpose. It has destiny. But we need to have a hard experience with God. It's not just a theory. It is God, the truth. Until you know who the truth is, we will begin to show you much more. You see, this church is called the Vine Sanctuary. So who is the vine? The vine is Jesus. The sanctuary it's not just this building. The sanctuary are the people of God. They are the church. So just reflect upon it. It's just not a physical sanctuary. The sanctuary consists of you and I, the people of God, the church that needs to be connected to the vine. It's the vine sanctuary. The people of God needs to be reconnected back to the source of life, the vine. We are the branches. Get connected back to Jesus by opening up your hearts. It is a spiritual house. We are the habitation 
of God. So in order even for us to do more for God, we need to first know the foundations. We need to go back to know the foundation. So this morning, we just want to reflect upon God. Reflect what was being spoken. What God has done. Did God really promise us all that He has promised us? Giving us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Is it true? Ask yourself, is it really true? Let's just stand if you can. Don't do life without Jesus. Life is not meant to live without Jesus. Have Jesus as your focus every time. One day you will know what I mean. When the rubber hits the road, you will know what it really means who Jesus is to you. Rediscover God. Rediscover the gospel. Why He has come? Why did He come? Or did He really come? Or has it been so stale already? <laughs> Until I don't know anything more. You know, I, I've known this, I heard this, I've done it all. You see, you just need to rediscover, rediscover God. Rekindle that fire that God has given. Rekindle, no matter how small, there is a fire in your life. God came to set all of us free, but sometimes we live our life without much freedom. God has really given us everything. Like the verse says, a promise has given us everything that pertains to life. A life with God in it. A life with God as your partner. A life that you don't have to walk alone. A life with the presence of God all over. Though you do not feel it at times. But God is still true to us all. He has given us all of Himself. He's completely finished His work which He came for. His mission was to bring us back to union with God so that we can have God's kind of life. Let's just begin to take this moment to ponder Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you. The Lord that sets us free. The Lord that liberates us from burdens, from pressures. Let's begin to just hand over your life once again to God. Like you first receive Him. Just give your attention, give your life back to God. Just give more of your time, more of your affection, more of your attention to God. Just celebrate Jesus. Don't let everything just stay the same like it used to. God has given us all so that we can have a dynamic spiritual life and liberty. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord, that your blood delivers us once and for all. It delivers us from fear. It delivers us from our mistakes. It delivers us and crush sin and death. 
once and for all there is no blood like your blood your blood is not another blood of an animal but your blood is the blood that is sinless that can bring us in union with you the blood who washes us whiter than snow the blood that delivers that heals situations that heals sickness begin to gaze you the Bible says gaze the glory of God you see so many times we say look unto Jesus look unto Jesus until look unto Jesus becomes nothing great anymore Just give your hearts back to Jesus. God can satisfy you. He can fill you. He's the living water. When you feel dry, He's the living water. He's the living water that never runs dry. He's who He really says He is your creator, your maker. He knows each of you, each one of you here. And He loves each one of you personally. God that holds each of us, the God that sustains, the God that preserves us. 
the deliverer, the restorer, the redeemer. You see, He redeems you from your past. He's made you new. Don't look back to your past for you are made anew. You are regenerated. You are a new creation. He's washed your sins. He has remembered your sins no more. As far as the heavens are on the earth. Just appreciate this morning. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. Thank you. 
honors all of us here. He honors you this morning. He honors you. He loves you. He honors you. He crowns you with the crown of life. You can never live a life one moment without God. God reconciles you to His love. He loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son to whomever believes in Him shall you have life endless, life eternal, life never separated from the presence, from the love of God. How beautiful is He who makes us worthy who honors us, who made us worthy. You have been made worthy. Don't feel unworthy. Don't feel that you are an orphan. God has called you to be a son, a daughter. Out from the miry clay, He has lifted you. Out from darkness, He has called you into His marvelous light. How marvelous! is the light of Jesus is crown us all with the crown of life he liberates you from all of your shame your failures your mistakes today is a new day every day is a new day in Jesus He is your deliverer, your restorer. He restores you. He redeems you. Bring you back into order. Bring you back into a life that you're supposed to live in. Soak yourself in the Word of God, in the presence of God. Keep your affections, your eyes upon Him. You see in the book of Genesis, man lost God because he's lost his focus on God. He was meant for the glory of God to live in the presence of God. But because he hid the voice other than the voice of God, it disconnects him from the presence of God. He was covered by the love, the presence of the glory of God. He did not know shame. He was without clothes. But because he lived in the presence, the glory of God, so much that he did not know but when he took his eyes off God, he began to see his shame. He lost all his focus. And today is the same. Today God has restored his glory unto us that we were meant for since the beginning. So choose to soak yourself in the love of God. Rekindle the fire for God so that you can stay focused and everything else does not matter. Everything else will be so small because God will become your environment. You will become very stable in God as you choose to live in the presence. Stir up the life, stir up the fire in you. Stir up that faith in you. Abide in Him. Connect to the source of life 
and everything else will work for you. You will begin to see the glory of God covering you. Just like it covers Adam. The second Adam came to give us that kind of life, the God kind of life that we are supposed to enjoy. It's the life and the liberty of God to those that choose to believe. Thank you, Jesus, for everyone that is here that has your life. Thank you, Jesus, for that life, unlimited life, limitless, endless life. We celebrate that life. We celebrate your truth. We celebrate all that you have given to us. We celebrate life all over again. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood that cleanses. The anointing that breaks every yoke. That breaks every wrong mindset. Thank you, Jesus, for liberty. Truly, you are our freedom. You are liberty to us. We appreciate you. We acknowledge you this morning in all that you have done. Thank you, Jesus, for the gospel of grace, the gospel of life. It has the power to deliver us. It keeps us safe. Thank you, Lord, for healing that's found in the blood. And the blood is still the blood that is fresh. Thank you, Lord, for the blood that cleanses, that heals us. We thank you, Lord, for this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in each one of our lives in this church, Lord. We just surrender every heart to you, Lord. Every moment of life, Lord, to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your love this morning for all of us here. We ask and pray all this in Jesus' name.